It's been a while since I've made beef jerky. And today I'm gonna to be making beef jerky strips. We're gonna make a nice marinade, get our beef all trimmed up, sliced, get it in that marinade overnight. And tomorrow we're gonna to make some terrific beef jerky the easy way in the oven. Our marinade's a pretty simple classic one today. We're starting with one cup of soy sauce. To this, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of raspberry vinegar. Now, if you can't get that, that's fine. Apple cider vinegar works great. I'm also adding two tablespoons of maple syrup, one tablespoon of a coarsely ground black pepper, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, and one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. If you want more heat, add more, less heat. You don't even have to add this. Let's mix this all together. It's funny, when I've done beef jerky videos, sometimes I get comments from people saying, that's not enough marinade. You don't need a ton of marinade. The jerky pieces, when you're marinating them overnight or for a few hours, don't need to be swimming in it. They just need enough that's in contact with the meat to be absorbed. If you end up pouring away tons of marinade, that was too much marinade. You don't need to waste it. All right, that's good. Let's move on to our beef. So what I'm using for my beef jerky today is about a seven pound eye of round roast. Now there's a lot of surface fat on this, which we're gonna need to trim up, but internally it's a pretty lean cut of meat, which is good for jerky. If you wanna leave more fat on, go ahead. I like to take a lot of fat off of these. And as I mentioned in all my jerky videos, I don't make this for preservation. I make this to be eaten quickly. It's going to go in some bags in the refrigerator once it's ready, and it'll be gone within five or six days. So this is not a recipe where you can store it and leave it out on the counter. It's a different preparation. There's tons of videos like that on YouTube, which you can find. I like mine this way. So we're just going to go ahead, get rid of this surface fat. I know I'll lose a little bit of meat in the process, but price you pay. I think by the time all the fat's gone from this, it's probably gonna be closer to a, I don't know, five and a half, six pound roast. But you can see once you get the fat off, how lean this is, just some very minor internal fat. And why is it that people remove a lot of fat when they're making beef jerky? Well, if you're making it for preservation, especially the fat is one of the first things to go rancid. So that's why you want to get rid of it. I just prefer a less fatty beef jerky. There are other cuts you can use. Top round, which is also sold as London broil. Bottom round. Really, you can make beef jerky out of any cut. Goodbye steaks. Another thing I'm not doing today is I'm not freezing or partially freezing the meat before I slice it. That really helps when you're going for those smaller sort of jerky-ish pieces because you can get them thinner. Because I'm going to be cutting long strips today, it's not as important to have that really firm texture. There we go, I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna go crazy getting every tiny little piece off. Now we are going to cut this into strips. First thing I wanna do is just cut it in half. It's gonna make it a little easier to work with. Then I'm gonna cut that piece in half too. And we're gonna start working on getting these into planks. Just about like that, you can see, you know, it's maybe a quarter inch thick. You get here, pieces like this. Be careful. So now on this piece, I'm just gonna show you here before I go and cut the rest of it up. We're gonna take this and we're gonna slice this into strips like that thin strips. Just like that, that's what we're looking for. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of this up and I'll bring you back when it's time to get it in the marinade. 
So here is our pile of beef. I do think it's about a little over five pounds and it's time to get it in the marinade. But first, we're gonna add one more ingredient to the marinade. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of hickory powder. Yes, hickory powder. This is gonna help bring some of that smokiness, even in addition to the smoked paprika. And it's pretty potent, but if you want more hickory flavor and you wanna use something like this, you can add a little more, but it's got a punch. Mix that in. Let's get our strips of beef in here, mix them up. And this is where you get to use your hands. Make sure everybody gets coated. All right, that's looking good. Let's get this into a Ziploc bag. We'll end up using two bags for this. Now I'm gonna pour some of the leftover marinade in each of these bags. All right, I'm gonna seal these up, wipe them down, and these are gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. And tomorrow, we're gonna to make some jerky. Well, good morning. Here is our beef jerky. Well, it's not beef jerky yet, but it is some beautifully marinated pieces of eye of round. I went ahead and I strained off the excess marinade, so let's get these pieces on some racks so we can jerkify them. So I'm just using a rimmed baking sheet with a baking or cooling rack, and I have another one set up over here to load up because they won't all fit on this one. Just gonna take our pieces, start arranging them. And we're gonna try to not have them touch too much, but if they touch a little bit, it's fine. These will shrink up as they dry. Got to play a little bit of a game of Tetris here to fit things. If they're all the exact same size, makes it easier, but they never end up the same size when I cut them. So we make it work. So we get one more piece over here. Now, if the pieces are extra wet from that marinade, you can always go ahead and pat them dry with some paper towels. This is actually fine. One of the reasons to do that is it just speeds up the drying process a little bit. You don't have to, but that excess marinade on the outside, most of it's just gonna drip off onto the pan. So if it's too wet, I generally will dry it off a bit. But like I said, this looks fine. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and rack the rest of this jerky and I'll see you over at the oven. So my oven is set to 160 degrees. Now I also have the dehydrate function turned on for this oven, it's built in, it just moves air. If you don't have that, that's fine. I've done it just like this without any dehydrate function. It can just speed up the process a bit. I also had too much beef to fit on just the two racks I had, so I'm gonna do an extra batch later. Let's get these two pans of jerky in. So our jerky is probably gonna take somewhere between four and five hours, but we'll check it in a couple hours. So I'll see you back here when it's time to check it. All right, we've been going just about two hours now. Let's check our jerky. That is starting to look really good. Let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, still pretty moist there, but I generally don't like my jerky super, super dry, so yeah, I think we're on track for about a four hour session here. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could turn those pieces to even out the color. I don't care about that, it all tastes the same. But let's get this closed back up, let it keep going. We'll check it again in two more hours. All right, we just hit the four hour mark. Let's go ahead and check this jerky. My guess is it's gonna be done to the way I like it. That is looking nice. Let me grab a piece here. Just starting to tear. It's got still moisture in it. This is the way I like it. I don't like it 100% dried out, and that's why I keep it in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these jerky pieces out of here, let them cool for just a little bit, and then I'm gonna have a taste. 
Well, here it is, a big old pile of beef jerky sticks. Now I call these sticks because I usually will do these in flatter strips, and I like this actually. These are a nice sort of alternative to that. They give you a little bit more of that just grip it, sort of like you're gonna beat something. But man, these turned out nice. Great color, just to the dryness that I like. If you like them drier and you're gonna make this, just go longer in the oven. But now it's time to taste. So let's see, which one should I try here? I'm gonna go for this guy. So let's see, I'm really interested to see how that hickory powder worked in here. I've used it in one other thing, but not jerky. And it's kind of a substitute if you wanted to use like liquid smoke or something, which I've used and I have no problem with, but the hickory powder is an interesting sort of thing to try. So let's see. Wow, I actually would not be able to tell if I did this on my electric smoker, which I've done jerky on dozens and dozens of times, or in the oven right now. And I've got to attribute that to that hickory powder. That really brought a smoky flavor to this. Hmm, I actually like that better than what I would get using liquid smoke. Like I said, I've used liquid smoke many times. If you use a good quality liquid smoke, all it is is water and smoke vapor that's been trapped in the water. But this has a more natural smoky flavor to it. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it to, to what I'm tasting. It just tastes like it came off the smoker. The smoked paprika will give you a little bit of that, but it doesn't give you this much. This is really that sort of hickory flavor. Mm. So that's how easy it is to make beef jerky in the oven strips like this with an addition of some hickory powder to really give it a smoky punch. Four hours, and now these are gonna go in some Ziploc bags in the refrigerator, because that's how I store it, but it'll be gone in days.